into all the world and preach the gospel. Release the World for Christ presents The Chris Panis Show. God has burdened Chris Panis to reach one billion souls enslaved behind the iron and bamboo curtains. Fresh from recent journeys to countries where he distributed Bibles and preached the living word, here is Chris Panis. We're going to see great and mighty things in these last days. The blind are going to see and the cripples are going to leap with joy in their legs. And we're going to see people, I mean, uh, spiritual uh, cataracts melt, but we're going to see cataracts melt too. We're going to see blind eyes opening. We're going to see all kinds of miracles. We're going to see a move of God's Spirit that Charles Price saw. You see, when he preached back in those early days in the 1900s, he said, I see who can fathom the mannerism of the Holy Spirit. So many times people rise up and say, God is telling me to start this or to stop, start that. But I want you to know something. We're in the will of God. And you're going to see so many miracles take place in this city. So many miracles. You're going to see denominations that are going to, uh, to the barriers are going to melt before us. And you're going to see people, they're going to take off the, their dark glasses of doubt. And we're going to be able to come together, not because we were Southern Baptists or Episcopalians or Greek Orthodox or Roman Catholics, but because Jesus is bringing us together by the power of his Holy Spirit. And we're going to see a move of God's Spirit like we've never seen before. According to the Scripture, unity. We're going to see unity on every level. God is going to melt us and bring us together, and he's going to do a supernatural work. And you know, God is going to use people. Can you say amen? amen? He's going to use bodies. He's going to use every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl, anyone that is willing to sell out for God. And you know what happened to us sometimes? We think that we're sometimes going to encourage. That's good. We're going to encourage somebody because we think they missed the will of God. But you know what happens is God just gives us a chance to minister. And not only that, get ministry, minister too. Can you say amen? amen. Led by the Holy Spirit. Chris has preached to men showing that Christianity is not a dull, drab life, but an adventure in which God is still doing the miracles which he performed 2,000 years ago. Situated in Houston, Texas, with an always busy ministry, Chris and his wife Tina are constantly in touch with those people around the world that are seeking spiritual help. Yes, can I help you? You need prayer? Well, praise God, we serve a God that is able to hear and to answer prayer. Do you believe that? Praise God. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Chris's staff is constantly keeping a close contact with the supporters of the Chris Panis ministry. Many come by to speak to groups about God's love flowing out through this ministry. It seems like when I got saved well nothing particularly changed but when i got filled with the spirit it seemed like the bottom dropped out of everything I, the first time i'd ever been through a trial or anything and and they they just kept getting harder and harder and but through these trials an amazing thing um, uh, every time i'd be crying out to god in some trial well, chris panis would call me i praise the lord that he that he could feel my trials too but it, it seemed like it never failed even even when I was in Israel, and we had many trials over there, but but um, I really appreciate uh, Chris and Ernestine, and, and uh, I really am enthused about Chris and Ernestine's excitement about going into places where, uh, you know, you tell Chris that there's some place no one's been. Well, he really gets excited about that, and and uh, he wants to go there immediately, and and uh, that's that's where I believe we. All should feel is to carry the word to those that haven't heard, and that's the um, that's what Jesus said to do. And and I just praise the Lord for this ministry and for knowing Ernestine and Chris. Norman Norwood, executive vice president of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, always likes to keep in close touch with Chris and his sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. I appreciate all of your prayers for this ministry and how you stood with us. We're kind of two home builders. That Same to you, Chris. I appreciate your prayers, and several times you've called me just at the very right time. Praise God. I appreciate that so much, Brother Norman. It, you've been a great blessing in our life. One of Chris's greatest admirers, his wife Tina, loves to tell of the healing miracles that she has seen as God has sent Chris around the world. 
someone brought this little man. He was crippled, had been crippled for many years. And someone brought him and dumped him out on the crusade grounds. And he could just drag himself. He couldn't walk. He was crippled. So there was no way for him to provide for himself but to sit on the street corner and beg. And so for many years he had done this. And so as Chris began to preach the gospel, this man began to hear the good news and hope began to rise in his heart. And so he believed that Jesus was the Christ. Then after the gospel was preached, Chris prayed for the sick. In a little while, this little man came up on the platform and he said, I am healed, I can walk, I can walk. This priest ran up and he said, oh, Mr. Panis, this is a real miracle because he said for six years every month I gave this man alms. And he said, this is a real miracle. And so the man had been in this condition for many years, but Jesus changed his life. After that, he began to go to his village and tell how God had saved him. In Mangalore, there were 50,000 Catholics that cooperated with our crusade, and God did great and mighty things. You see them here sitting on the platform, and one lady wrote, and she said, uh, Mr. Chris Panish, you will never know where your coming to India will end. She said, for 25 years, I have prayed that a man would come that had the same mission as the Apostle Paul. Men like Pastor Philip Abraham will never forget Chris Panis and how God used him in the exciting crusades throughout India. From 40,000 to 200,000 people in several crusades, especially uh, the crusade which we conducted in Mangalore, southwest part of India, for one service, we had 200,000 people. Because of these crusades, we could uh, present the gospel to multitude of India, and many people were healed, and also many thousands were accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Let's join Chris and Tina as three guests speak out on his TV show. Michael, it's a pleasure to have you here on the Chris Panna Show. Tell me exactly what happened to you when you read the book, God's Spy. Okay, Brother Panna, first let me say that in 1974, my family was going through a severe crisis concerning a child custody suit. At that time, I was not an attorney, and we were involved in this legal battle, and we were very concerned about two children being raised in a cr Christian home and a Christian atmosphere. And unfortunately, the court system took the two children away from the family, and they were taken to another state. At that time, the family was very despondent and discouraged. And I went to a bookstore, and I picked up a copy of your book, God's Spy. In addition to that, I read your book called Faith Under Fire, and it greatly encouraged my faith. I took the book, and I let my parents read it. I let my sister read it. And it just greatly invigorated our faith and encouraged us to trust God. And we began to pray and seek God. And it wasn't very long before that whole situation was turned around and the court reversed itself and put the children back into the custody of our family. And we've enjoyed the blessings of God. And the children are now in a Christian school. And it's a, a beautiful life thanks to what God did. And I attribute part of that to the inspiration that came forth from the book that you wrote, God Spy. Now, in 1983, I, while I was practicing law, I began to have trouble with my ear, and it was interfering with my uh, job performance. So I went to a medical specialist, and he examined me, and he looked at me, and he said, uh, you have a tumorous growth in your ear, and you need immediate surgery. I thought it best to get a second opinion, so I uh, checked with a nurse who works with our office, and she recommended another physician. And he gave essentially the same diagnosis that I had a tumorous growth and that he would give me some medication uh, to try for a week, but that he was of the opinion I would need surgery too. It was at that point that I had called you and expressed to you uh, my present physical condition. 
And I ask if you would join uh, with me in prayer to pray that the Lord would heal me. And so you prayed for me. You laid hands on me and asked God to uh, restore my health. And a week later, I went back to the physician, and he examined my ear. And he looked at me, and he stated, he said, uh, Mr. Paso, he said, I, truthfully, I thought that when you came back in here, I was going to have to tell you that we were going to have to operate. But he said, uh, amazingly, the thing is, is uh, essentially gone. And I didn't have to go back, and my ear's been fine ever since. Well, how can, you, how can an attorney that's so well educated explain a miracle like that? Well, I don't have any problems myself understanding miracles. I see this as being a three-dimensional world and that it's, it's uh, beyond this three-dimensional world is the uh, dimensions of God that can intervene into our world uh, when we break through in, in prayer and in faith and looking to God for help. Mike, that's just uh, tremendous. Yes, it really it touches my heart that uh, God loves us so much. You and I prayed, but God did the miracle. That's right. Praise God. That's wonderful. Deborah Padgett, I just welcome you to the Chris Panna Show. You look so beautiful today, Thank and you're such an inspiration to us to know that a real movie star, in fact, one of the stars of the Ten Commandments, has received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Tell me, how, how did that happen? <laughs> well, Chris, um, I've talked to God all my life since I was a little girl. I've talked to Jesus. I believe when I was very small, I must have received him as Lord and Savior because I have a two-way path. As I'm speaking to you, I'm also speaking to him, and it's been that way all my life. And of course, I have walked, I've thought with him every day of my life. My one prayer has always been, Jesus, I don't want to fail you because you never fail me, and he never has. And of course, how many times I have failed him. But he has led me through my entire life, as I look back, I see his hand has been upon me, leading me here, leading me there, guiding me a little further each time until he got me into a position some years back, about 14 years ago, where I actually became born again. I knew that experience. Um, I, be I became knowledgeable in the Word of God, which I had not been before. I walked in a lot of ignorance with him. But my heart has always been to him and for him. And um, I know that his protection has been on me all my life. I can think of how many times I could have been killed, even in filmmaking. I look back, and it's incredible mm. yes. the times that he's brought me through. And through all the trials of my life, he's been there. Deborah, you know that what really fascinated me when you was Lydia, the water girl, in the Ten Commandments, and when you were giving Joshua some water, and that scene there, I just thought that uh, it, was, it was not only romantic, but it was as though that uh, Dathan was right on your heels and, <laughs> and he was trying to uh, steal you away from Joshua and here you were, the, uh, the, the, little, Jewesses, the little Jewish girl that was uh, without blemish mm -hmm. and uh, you loved God and you wanted a husband like Joshua. How did you feel when you began to portray such a character in, in the Ten Commandments. Did you feel God or, or, or anything? Well, I imagine I must have because I felt God all my life. So I don't think I could have separated it, you know, in, in most parts that I played. Um, my career actually, in my funny way, was for God. I love my work so much because I know that God put a desire to do that. Always I had wanted to be an actress. But it was mainly uh, not for the fame or the monetary uh, reward. It was my way of working for God. I thought if you made people happy, mm -hmm. I mean, I know that seems strange and childish, but at that point in my life, that's what it meant to me. And that's why I worked as hard at it as I did. And of course, I had um, many blessings that came through it. I mean, God just has poured out blessings on me all my life and still does to this day, you know, but, but um, of course, the main important blessing being that now I truly know Jesus as Lord and Savior and that I have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Praise the and Lord. And my life is just thrilling and exciting, and I know that there's, there's no challenge that can't be met by my Lord.